Hello and welcome to TSG Foundation's Wisdom of the Zodiac. Today's lesson and meditation will be taken from Wisdom of the Zodiac by Torquem Serdarian, Volume 4, Chapter 28, titled Aquarius, Preparation for the New Age. This is a wonderful chapter that helps us understand what is the new age that we have been hearing about for the last 40 or 50 years or more. What does that really mean? And how is it going to come about? It's a wonderful and very practical chapter. Let's open our books to page 329 and read that first paragraph in the first part of it. We celebrate full moon occasions for many reasons and goals. First of all, we use these opportunities because the energies of the constellations are closer to us during the full moons. We use these energies for self-development. Okay, so keep that in your mind. It's for development of the self, big S, or higher self. So these energies, when we meditate on them, read about them, look at the different aspects of them, it is meant to develop our higher nature. That is one of the major goals. Okay, so keep that in your mind. That's one of your major goals to do this. When you read, when you meditate, when you get together with your group, or by yourself and you think about these ideas, you study them, your major goal is developing your higher self. We don't want to be like ducklings that enter the water and when they get out they shake themselves and there's no water remaining on their skin. Isn't that a cute picture for us that when a little duck gets in the water and comes out just shakes itself off and the water comes out. So he's saying let's not just dip ourselves into the teaching and then we get out and shake our foot and say, well, that was nice. That was a great meditation. And we go on with our common life and making no changes or not even learning anything. Sometimes we learn the teaching, read the teaching, but it does not penetrate into our skin. So he's saying, don't let it just sit on the top of your body, these teachings, these ideas, these meditations, but let them penetrate, do something with them. We remain the same people, and that's true. When we look at the world today, many things have changed, but many things are the same. We still have the same problems of hatred and anger and jealousy and fighting and wars. We haven't been able to solve these problems. Why is that? Because the teachings of the great religions and spiritual traditions, as well as the esoteric wisdom that has been given to us for thousands of years, has not penetrated into our skin uh, to a large extent, but it is starting to do so. The full moon period is the period when we make a very special effort to make the teaching enter into our bones, into our souls. And this is one of the main goals. So take this very seriously as we round and go around this full moon periods month after month, year after year, now we are entering Aquarius and it is time for something new to appear in our individual lives, family, group life, as well as national and international. And what is that? It is that sense of unity with each other as well as unity with the higher world. So this is the keynote for Aquarius. Let's go now to the next page, page 330. Let me read from the second paragraph. There are seven concepts of the Aquarian age. And he discusses in this chapter seven concepts that I will go through each one very briefly and then I will give a little more extended information about one of them. If we realize and assimilate these concepts, it means that we are entering into the Aquarian age in our consciousness. You see, it's not enough for us just to read, to learn about it or read about it on the internet. It is important, very important for us to have it be realized and assimilated in our consciousness. That means there is effective change in us, in the way we live, in the way we speak, in the way we think, in the kinds of decisions that we make in our life. When the Aquarian age fully comes, we will be prepared to regenerate ourselves with the energy that is entering into our planetary system. You see, we can't help it. That energy is coming into our planet and it is 
changing everything and we have to get in the in the flow of it we are told that in approximately 135 years that's not very long 135 is a couple of lifetimes the constellation of Aquarius will be coordinated and synchronized with our planetary life that means that whole constellation of Aquarius will be synchronized with our planet and our life and all life in it what are the things that that constellation is going to bring into our consciousness that's the question he asks these changes in our consciousness will not happen suddenly but they are happening slowly as I read these pages and then looked at these different seven concepts I saw that little by little they are being imbued into human consciousness and we are seeing it they will not come suddenly but as the years go by we will get closer and closer to these energies and little signs and little seeds will sp start sprouting in our consciousness so as I go through these one by one I want to ask you do you see examples of these taking place in your life in your personal life and then around you at work maybe maybe not maybe in your family maybe in your group and then see what nations and what groups of people in different nations are exemplifying these concepts okay what is the first one the first one is we are going to see in the consciousness of those who are disciples and those who are really sincere in wanting to change themselves and be human is discrimination now discrimination is often touted as we are better than they are it's color consciousness religion separation by religion by color by identification in your gender by many things wealth property smartness education clothes we wear so there is that kind of idea discrimination but this is different the discrimination that we are going to talk about is what is the functions of our lower self versus the higher self the first discrimination we are going to make is find out what is the higher self and what is the not self within ourselves okay you are going to say this is not me this is me and you are going to distinguish those two sides very clearly in your heart and you know what only you know what that is I can't tell you what that is inside of you and don't let other people tell you what is the real you and what is the not you find out for yourself how do you find out for yourself you look at your physical emotional mental activities your speech your reactions the way you have a conversation and say at the end of the day when you are doing your evening review was that really me was that just some imported pattern that I brought from the past from expectations of people around me so these are very important and sobering questions that you can ask yourself that will really help you I know when I do this with my physical life emotional and mental life my own even beliefs what do I really believe and why do I believe something really important happens something shifts inside of me and when I take a different road I get more self-confident more self-assured and really internally more joyful that is what we are looking for is to have that inner sense of well-being that you are on the right track and you're doing okay and that's really important let's look at page 331 the Aquarian age must bring this discrimination into the consciousness of humanity it's so true isn't it we are so tired of sectarianism and racism and separatism we're so tired of that because if we don't without developing this kind of discrimination we will eventually get closer to the annihilation of the human race with pollution and wars and hatred and separatism and jealousy and treason we are getting closer to destruction instead of that what do we want we don't want to live in falsehoods of separatism the truth is and we all know this we are unified in one body the planetary body the cosmic body even solar system body it's so beautiful so we are going to be working talking thinking feeling and asking ourselves is this really me my higher part 
or is this just my mundane, everyday, reactive part? Do this with seriousness during the month of Aquarius and you will see wonderful changes take place in you. But let's look at a little bit some of the other ideas or concepts that he talks about in this chapter. The second one is to have ordered activity. And when it comes to ordered activity, what I'd like to focus on is your ordered morning or evening meditation and study. I have said this before to many people. If you find value in yourself and you think you are a valuable human being and you have something of value to give to life, then your time is valuable in spending 5 to 15 minutes a day to study and meditate, just to pray, to read something beautiful, read any book from the teaching and make that your ritual every day. That is so important. Even 5 to 10 minutes I have seen when people do that, great changes take place in their lives. So as you go through this year of Aquarius, study these pages, make a mental effort to say, I'm going to sit on my special chair every day at a certain time. And even if I don't want to do anything, I'm just going to sit and relax and breathe and say a prayer or a mantra or sing a song and make that part of a ritual. And that's what I understand to be an ordered activity. Okay, ordered spiritual activity. 24 hours a day, we either sleep or eat or work or run around. Well, can you take 5 to 15 minutes a day to educate and empower and make that inner change possible? You can do this with reading the teaching and meditating on the teaching. What's the third concept? And that is adaptability. That's really interesting. Adaptability means from now on, as full moons come and go, we get closer to the 135 years where Aquarius is really entering into our sphere with its energy. People will start to adapt themselves to the incoming energies. We're going to adapt ourselves. What does that say? He says that Tibetan master says that all civilizations and cultures and all events taking place on this earth are nothing else but the result of our responses or reactions to the incoming energies. So you are going to say, what is life requiring from me at this time? And how do I adapt to that? For example, life requires from us to have periods of quiet and serenity. So you're going to adapt to that call. You're going to ask yourself, what is life calling me to do? And how do I adapt myself to that call? That's how I see adaptability. What is being asked of me and how do I respond to that? Okay. The fourth concept is self-recognition. I really like this because I see people not having enough self-confidence. They are so oh, hypnotized with the old tapes and old patterns that they just gloss over this very important concept of self-recognition. As the new age is entering the sphere of human thinking, you will see that people will try more and more to face and see themselves. And when you face and see yourself, if the only thing you see is negative and painful patterns, that will be very hurtful for you. I want you to see the truth about yourself, but I also want you to see the real truth, the divine part of you. As you remember from our last full moon, we are going to release that divinity and we're going to do that through facing and seeing the truth about ourselves. That's so important and so beautiful. The fifth one is spiritual independence. I absolutely love this. It is so important to me that you are going to be independent in fashioning your life and your progress. You can read books, you can listen to advice, you can do your meditation as I guide us through these meditations. That's wonderful. But at the end of the day, I want you to be independent. I want you to have spiritual independence where you listen to yourself and you develop that antenna, okay, that antenna and receptivity that tells you exactly what you need to do and when and how. That's so important. Look at page 335. 
Spiritual independence means you progress. You make all your strivings and efforts without being pushed and pulled and beaten and squeezed. It's not other people who are pushing you. It's not even me who is pushing you or these books or Torkum. It is you who is taking charge of yourself and being independent. From the well deep inside of you, you make your own progress. I love this. Your own way and you become a way in quotation marks. When you make your progress in your own way, you own it. You own your progress. You own your higher self. You own yourself. You own your accomplishments. And when you do that, you become a path for others just by being in the room with other people. Your spiritual independence is one of the most important things that I will emphasize for you. Look what it says at the last paragraph of that section on page 335. When you are pulled and pushed through newspapers, through propaganda, through advertisements, through this and that, you are a bouncing ball, nothing else. Try to develop that spiritual independence. Now we know, we know that there are social media outlets that try to give us false news and fake news and try to inspire in us fear and hatred and sectarianism for this and that. We have to be more careful now than ever before because it has become a science to manipulate human beings. And we cannot fall for that. Spiritual disciples have to be powerful and strong and centered in their spiritual independence. If you hear something or see something, question it and go deep inside of yourself. And this comes from self-recognition. Do you see that? You recognize who you are. Your intuition tells you this is true, this is not true. Stay with it and become spiritually independent. That's how you are going to be a way for yourself and for others. I love that. Isn't that beautiful? Love it. The sixth one is purity. And that goes along with self-recognition, your pure self, spiritual independence, and then psychic purity. Psychic purity is very important to me. The people that I meet who have the most trouble in their lives, physical health problems, emotional health problems, mental health problems, psychic health problems, are those people who do not stay focused in the highest teachings, and they fall prey to psychics and mediums and spiritualists, and they do not focus on their own inner wisdom. They fall prey to people's egos and vanities and illusions and glamours, and those things grow in them like tentacles, and they can't then focus on the most important teachings. So let me emphasize again, spiritual independence and psychic purity are two very important concepts that I'd like you to really pull into yourself during this Aquarius. The new age is not going to come in if we rely on the old age, okay? Keep that in your mind. If you rely on the old inside of you, you are not going to become new. What is the seventh concept? Page 336, it is the seventh concept is unity. This is so important. I want to really think about this. I want us all to become men and women of unity, of togetherness, of brotherhood and sisterhood of all of humanity. We do not want to allow abuse and neglect of our brethren. That's what the Aquarian age is all about. The Aquarian age always leads us into actions that support unity, feelings that support unity, words and books that support unity and lead us to unity, thinking and thoughts that lead us to unity. And these are important. So when you read, when you hear, when you are in a conversation that touts separatism and ugliness and we are better than they are and so on, get away from it. Don't let that virus come inside of you and taint you and make you sick with ego and vanity. These are so, so important. This is a powerful message that I wanted to give to you at this period of Aquarius, that you think of unity and self-confidence. Look at page 337 that I feel is the key to this beautiful chapter. The age of humanity has individual races which are like strings in the piano 
that harmonize with each other and enjoy everything everywhere in the world. Of course, we are traveling and enjoying different cultures, different races, different languages, different foods, different literatures and art and architecture. Of course, this is something that everybody enjoys. It's not just for an elite group of people. It's for all of us. This age is going to come in 75 to 100 years if enough people are prepared to be transmitters of the energy that is going to be released by Aquarius. Okay, when that energy is released and we are unified, we are together, we are going to see a huge flowering of the age of Aquarius on our planet. Let's go to page 338. I love this beautiful, beautiful paragraph. Let me just read highlights from it. We have two or three hundred years ahead of us in the Aquarian age. The age will come and we will see that those who are adapting themselves closely to the new age will be born very quickly and take part in the reconstructing of the world. Okay, reconstructing of the world with the right ideas. Live as a human if you can. Wow, it is very difficult. Human means the divine in you is expressed in everything that you do. It is very difficult. I know from my experience that it's very difficult to detach from your past national, racial, tradition, and religious hang-ups or pressures or bribery and different things. But unless you detach yourself and concentrate yourself within your higher self and try to adapt yourself from now on, you will have lots of trouble. Okay, this is a warning for us that we better get in the program of the new and adapt ourselves to the highest. This vision will lead you into those activities which will discipline yourself, adapt yourself, purify yourself, and use discrimination and eventually be your true self. Only then will you be a transmitter of the Aquarian energies. So we will see here that in any age there are people who transmit the higher energies and there are people who will always try to hold us back and ground us and we are going to be independent, independent with pure psychic energy that will take us to the new age, the Aquarian age. That is beautiful. Read the rest of this chapter and study it. Take the five or seven days of the full moon period to do these beautiful meditations and studies. I love these chapters and I use them every month. I never get tired of them. I read them over and over and there's something new every time I read it. Okay, let us now do a beautiful meditation that's given on page 342, 43 and 44. It is rather lengthy, but I will walk us through it. Okay, so relax, sit up and close your eyes and take a deep breath. begin with a great invocation and follow it with three ohms out loud or quiet any way that you want and as we are saying the great invocation think of people around you whether they're sitting with you or anywhere in the world people watching this video having meetings and saying it with us okay think of the whole planet saying the great invocation all right From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ 
return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Let us say three ohms. We are going to meditate with your eyes closed on the keynote of purity. What purity or purification do I need? Let's take it sequentially. First physical, name three things that you want to purify, then go emotional, then go mental, then go spiritual. What do you need to purify in your spiritual life? Let's take a few minutes and do this beautiful meditation. Stay always focused. Don't let your mind wander. Okay? Go to the emotional purification. What three things you would like to clean from your emotions? Go to your mental purity. What kind of purity would you like to see in your mind, in your thoughts? Now let's go to your spiritual nature. What three pure practices you want to instill fire in your spiritual life. Let us say together, lead us, O Lord. Lead us, O Lord, from darkness to light, from the unreal to the real, from death to immortality, from chaos to beauty. Repeat after me. Let vision come and insight. Let the future stand revealed. Let inner union demonstrate. Outer cleavages be gone. Let love prevail. 
let all human beings, men and women, love. Now staying conscious with your eyes closed, focus again on the purities that you want to bring into your life. Think of the top pure steps that you are going to take, the most important in this year that you will always focus on. Take your time and really nail down three actions or activities. Let us close with the following mantra. You can say it with me. It's a beautiful mantra of unification. The sons of men are one, and I am one with them. I seek to love, not hate. I seek to serve and not exact due service. I seek to heal, not hurt. Let vision come and insight. Let the future stand revealed. Let inner union demonstrate. Outer cleavages be gone. Let love prevail. Let all men love. Let us say three ohms. Thank you for joining me for the celebration of Aquarius. It is a beautiful time of the year, and I wish the blessings of the Great Ones be on you and bring new things into your life, newness that will help you respond to the energies of Aquarius. Thank you for being with me, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.